there are probably for many of us few things that would rouse us um, out of bed on a rainy Sunday morning with nor'easter approaching. But um, if anyone can do it, I think it's probably the man sitting to my right, Mr. Leonardo Drew. So here's the official bio for those of you that don't know. Uh, Leonardo was born in Tallahassee, Florida, and he grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. From a very early age, he was recognized for his exceptional ability and natural talent uh, for drawing and first showed his work at the age of 13. I mean, so you started collecting when he started drawing. Um, early, prodigies here. Uh, he went on to attend Parsons and then received a BFA from the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art in 1985. And I think many of you know his work has been shown nationally and internationally and are in many public and private collections, including the Jordan Schnitzer collection, um, but also the collection of the Met and the Guggenheim and MoCA and the Hirshhorn. Um, New York Times critic Roberta Smith describes his large reliefs as, quote, pocked, splintered, seemingly burned here, bristling there, unexpectedly delicate elsewhere, an endless catastrophe seen from above. These energies intimated in these works are beyond human control, bigger than all of us. But they, of course, are not beyond human control because they are the creation of the man sitting right here. And I thought what we'd do this morning is just walk a little bit through your practice overall for people who don't know that part as well as they know the additions, just to get a sense of kind of what it is you do. And I thought we'd start here with this. It's an early work, but one that I think was really a, a breakthrough for you. And it's interesting because for me, looking at this work, which is now several decades in the past, I think you already can see the things that have really become hallmarks for you, the way you use and manipulate materials, this idea of kind of the, the application of many layers of information, the buildup. Um, you know that started off with like Jackson Pollock. This with is, Jackson Pollock. This is, uh, 3D this is the 3D Pollock. <laughs> so it's funny because people often talk about, um, in Pollock, the skeins of paint. That's mm -hmm. the term they use. And of course, that comes from, you know, skeins of rope or twine. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. here it is, right? So before it was Pollock for you, who, who was it? Okay, Maxwell Parrish, Norman Rockwell. Uh, yeah, this is what I thought art was. So honestly, you know, Going from that to this is a huge leap, but what needed to sort of happen was for me to sort of, uh, uh, I mean, at that time I was asked by DC Comics, Marvel Comics, uh, Heavy Metal Magazine to come in and join their little club, you know, and I remember, was it, was it, uh, uh, DC had their movie, the Superman movie out at that time, it was 1977, mm -hmm. and they were like, well, come join us because, uh, you know, we have this great movie, you know. And I was like, wow, it's like, you know, but I saw Jackson Pollock, so yeah. I was already poisoned. <laughs> so, so, so it was like, there was no way I was going to join their bullpen, so to speak. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I, I, it, w the decisions to sort of uh, make, you know, like a, a leaps of faith like that yeah. have a lot to do with um, at what point do you uh, interject yourself into the real world, which is, I mean, if you're an artist, you're creating, you're creating out of instinct. Yeah. You're an addict, you're creating, right? Uh, the, 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 the idea of what you do with your facility is pretty much up to your hunger, uh, your way of, 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 of you know, having these sort of uh, experiences that will drive you to the next place, the next level. Uh, honestly, you know, like uh, from that time to this is like, okay, I have to tie my hands Literally say, okay, you're no longer going to be able to allow yourself to draw, paint, mm -hmm. uh, all the things that came easy for you. You're not doing that anymore. And uh, there's got to be another way to break past that prettified surface. Now, a prettified surface would be uh, things like, okay, a very beautiful image done by someone like Maxwell Parrish. Uh, beautiful, yes, to look at, but what's beyond that surface? Jackson Pollock breaks that. This breaks that. Yeah. This is actually the 3D version of that. It's not like I was thinking about that when I created this piece because I was not allowing myself to no longer like, to draw, paint, or uh, uh, do anything that, like I was saying, like that would you know uh, you know would use my facility. Yeah. I had to find another way to create, and in doing so, uh, uh, it was like okay, uh, you know, you're limited, and and what kind of materials uh, that you are used to now to what you're not, you don't know. So you place yourself in an unknown place. Yeah. 
uh, the, 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 the 3D work started coming because of that. Yeah. It was like, okay, uh, you go from a two-dimensional uh, and into this whole other, like, okay, way of, I mean, I started playing with dead things. That's, mm -hmm. It's made right. up of dead animals. Yeah. So there's all these entangled things embedded in this piece, but it was all about trying to sort of break past all of my fears. Yeah. And, uh, and, and get past all of my comfort zones. Yeah. And I think that's, that's every artist's journey is that. Yeah. But it's at what point do you inject that into your life? I was going to say, it sounds in a way about really putting yourself in a position of discomfort. That's correct. Of forcing yourself to work from challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you look back on something like this, do you mm -hmm. remember that period as being one of... Yeah, it was dark. Uh, yeah. It was a dark period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no light. I mean, there's like, there's nothing that you're familiar with. Yeah. So you're moving around in the dark, so yeah. to speak. Uh, so you're feeling around, you're asking questions, deep questions about who you are as a person, as a, as a human being, you know, and uh, in the end, it's like, okay, what are, your, what are our biggest fears? I mean, the unknown is one of them, and it's, death is that biggest unknown. Yeah. And how to arrive at knowing what's on the other side of that, the closest thing that I could get to realizing that was to sort of touch something that was mm -hmm. dead. You know, so it was about playing with, I mean, when I was at Cooper Union, we learned how to sort of uh, uh, cure animals, uh, uh, dead things. And so I applied that to uh, mm -hmm. this, working this piece, and then started entangling all of the things that I found, roadkill, uh, things that I found up in Heather Hills, past mm -hmm. the Hamptons. There's a mm -hmm. quicksand pit, you know, dragging those things out and using them as to create art. Yeah. And, uh, and it's this sort of almost cathartically, you sort of like, find yourself in a whole other state of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, that very, I never have to use dead animals again thereafter, but honestly, if you look at the continuum of my work, it still is, it's there. Yeah. No, <laughs> there is. Without the parts, there's, the sensational there's parts. There's very much a sense of, mm. and we're moving on to something much more recent now, but mm. I mean, certainly continuing the use of found materials, things that in a way could be seen as having exhausted one life mm. that you then put into practice in a new life. But I should tell you that I, I don't really use found objects. Right. I, this is one, you found a piece where I actually <laughs> did use found <laughs> objects. This is sort of one other time when I did that. But it's like, uh, this is like when my explorations into color and to achieve that at a, a quick, quickly, I needed to sort of like realize it uh, in something that was already ready-made. I stay away from ready-mades because embedded within that, you already have a sense of history. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to go through the whole sort of um, uh, uh, trajectory of the life of a piece. And I think that if you become the weather and you connect yourself to the, even the things that you buy in a store, mm -hmm. you can actually achieve the same things that, I mean, we are not separate from nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I can't really, I mean, I, I am nature. It exists around us. I am it. We're all it. So you, you like in becoming the weather, it should not be a difficult thing for any mm -hmm. artist to achieve uh, what, uh, 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 the weather does to things, you know? So, I mean, I take new things and I make them old. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. Becoming mm. the weather seems like something a superhero would be able to do. Yes. Just going back <laughs> to your superhero connection. The other thing in this, though, and we'll see it in the next slide, too, is an idea about scale. Mm. And this, for me, um, often when I come into contact with your work, there is a, a certain kind of sense of awe. You're mm. often faced with something that's bigger than yourself, mm. right? It kind of encompasses mm. you. Yeah. And I was just curious about how, how you think about scale when you're working. Well, I mean, there are a number of ways you can approach scale, but learning how to sort of create something that you can actually get out of your room is a big one, you know? <laughs> I, I, I've had, I, you only do that once. And if you look at this piece, you can see it's gridded. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like there's, squares are 24 by 24. Like when I had created that number eight, for instance, like, you know, uh, I had learned how to sort of break things down. But just before that, I didn't know anything about that. So friends would come over and say, how are you going to get this out of here? Right. You know, so, you know, really knowing sort of uh, 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 how, first of all, how to sort of like uh, realize something is one thing. Mm -hmm. But then there's you have to connect yourself to, then to the real world. Right. Uh, that being said, you know, you create things that are uh, that can speak to the body, mm -hmm. so to speak. So uh, making something that makes you vibrate when you stand in front of it. I mean, it's, uh, I, 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 I have to create mirrors mm -hmm. so that you, as a viewer, can actually see yourself. I mean, I number all the works just for that reason. Pull myself just far enough away so that you can have a full-on experience mm -hmm. and uh, uh, without me interjecting mm -hmm. 
this is what you should be thinking when you see the works or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, this is, this is a collective memory. I mean, that's, that's a memory bank that I'm pulling from. Mm -hmm. That's not just about me. It should not just be about me. And actually, honestly, I believe that that complicity is, is, is exactly that. You should be complicit in finishing, rounding off, realizing uh, 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 the, uh, the full on life of the pieces. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, uh, you know, so if you are standing in front of something and you're saying, okay, scale is about scale, actually, inevitably, it ends up not being about scale. It ends up being about our collective experience. Mm -hmm. And that you are now in front of a mirror and you are just as important as me as the creator. You are important in completing the piece as the viewer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I just like to get the hell out of your way. Uh -huh. That's all. Yeah. So for you, that objective titling, mm -hmm. just the numbering system, mm -hmm. allows any sense of kind of subjective, the, the yeah. imposition of... What does 190 mean? I don't know what that yeah. means. I, can't, I can hardly remember the numbers of most of these things. <laughs> but it's like, you know, but in the end, it's like you catalog it. You make it so that actually it's out there in the world. It has its legs. It's moving around in its own. And it doesn't need you to sort of complete itself. Yeah. It needs you to complete it, you know? Right. Yeah. I've visited many studios over the years. And I think in my top five would be my visit to you in Cypress Hills. Oh. I mean, when you walk through the door of Leo's studio, for me, it really was entering your universe. It was kind of like a, a shift in time and space in a way. You have your own... You have I your own weathered sanity patterns in, a sea of in there. Chaos. <laughs> I no, don't understand it in a sea of chaos. That's probably you, best. you have like your own, it has its own soundtrack, it has its own like ecosystem, it has its own weather in there, it feels like. And kind of in all different parts of the studio, there are different things going on. But I wanted to to ask you, because it will relate to what we talk about when it comes to additions, is mm. what it means for you when you have when you leave the studio and you mm. and you work in another environment. I mean, something like this you can plan, of course but the installation of it requires you really being in a space other than your own and and well honestly the honest there. god truth i'm going to tell you i i'm, I'm in the studio now yeah <laughs> you know yeah. i i right. um, okay. I, I probably physically i'm probably physically here but actually i'm still working so you guys are getting a portion of me <laughs> here but it the it, it's it, i think that you it's like like a turtle traveling with his is his, uh, his home. Mm -hmm. So it, there's no way to sort of like separate me from, you know, the body is like an antenna, right? Mm. It's a receiver of information. Mm -hmm. So you should be collecting, I'm collecting this experience to sort of bring it into what I'm going to be sort of creating uh, today, tomorrow, and beyond. So uh, there's, I don't think there's ever a moment when I'm off, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like you're on vacation. That's, you know, uh, my assistant say like, it's like there's, there's never really a vacation, huh? I say, nope. <laughs> we are on, I'm just working on, from on, a different it's, location. It's, you know, I, my mother used to try to, like, rough me up to try to get me to stop. Mm -hmm. And so that's not – she's a force of nature. So if she couldn't do it, then I think that in the end, that's – you are an addict. You are it. you got to admit that this is it, and you just – you're hooked. And yeah. that's, that's – uh, so the studio was there at that time. Okay. It's here with me now. And welcome to my studio, guys. <laughs> Feels good to be here. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the hospitality. Um, and I wanted to also talk just for a minute about other uh, work on paper you've done, which I think this pre predates mm. your getting into the studio with Pace or Crown Point. It's hard to keep up. But I'll tell you, like a lot of these things get created and you move on. I mean, yeah. I think that one was in Cuba, maybe. Okay. Yes, it's like, you know, you know, there's residue and dirt and things like that. Uh, like I said, if you ground yourself, you're in a place, then you're yeah. really there and you make things. But I think that was, yeah. you, they vibrate, they do yeah. things, they have a life of their own. And um, a lot of times when I'm creating them, honestly, you know, I'm clueless. I'm like, what the whole thing is about, whatever. It's like you're, you, you, they grab you and they pull you by the nose and you're, you belong to them. Mm -hmm. And... And only way that, only thing that really rescues me is like you're working. If you're working seven things, you're rotating them. Mm -hmm. It was like seven crying babies, mm -hmm. and you're trying to sort of like you know, and then they are gone. And so, but there's always that rotation of you know. In that way, you don't slump. You don't like. I couldn't like, sit there focus on one thing. I mean, I drive myself crazy. It's yeah. like you need to sort of have all these things speaking all at one time, and they assist each other yeah. in order to sort of like realize themselves. Yeah. And like, uh, uh, so there are things in the studio now that are made from parts from other works, you know, you know, it's like, uh, so nothing is really sacred in the studio. Yeah. So once you sort of make that kind of decision, 
uh, anything is possible, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of completing, they can complete themselves yeah. with the assistance of each other. And, and the, the bleeding in the studio happens, but it's like less bleeding if you allow them to sort of like, you know, take you on the trip. Yeah, so, yeah. I wondered with these also about going to the idea of paper mm. as a material. Mm. I mean, you often use wood, and I love. There's something kind of poetic about the idea that, like, the ultimate breakdown of mm. the material of wood is, of course, the mm -hmm. pulp, which mm -hmm. you're you're using in depth now. But I know you're also someone for whom travel is really critical, mm. being in different places and seeing different things. And um, I'm working in China now. Uh, last, I've been back, I guess, about three weeks now, right? Richard? Yeah, like five weeks in China, mm -hmm. and uh, in a place called Jingdezhen. Okay. Which oh, is uh, yeah. where they do porcelain. Ceramic, and like yeah. That. I, honestly, I don't know how it ended up. <laughs> it, that was not on my, how do you say, on my, um, was it, it, was, on it wasn't on my radar. bucket list? It, it was like uh, all of a sudden I found myself in China, and it is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the kind of things that you are, uh, you know, like uh, uh, fed spiritually and, and actually physically, but it's an incredible place. Yeah. And uh, just my senses went wild there, and I just I believe I will have a studio there in the near future. Really? And so it's just really a matter of, uh, of, 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 of these places speaking to you and then you actually creating based on the kind of information and the kind of energies that you're getting from that place. Yeah. So the, 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 the kind of things that I've done with, like, say, with Pace Prints, for mm -hmm. instance, have introduced an unbelievable amount of possibilities. I mean, I've worked with the best technicians, Ruth and Akimi, <laughs> who are here in the audience. And honestly, I call these, the works that I've done with them are, are, are collaborations, really. Yeah. It's like uh, I could not have made these uh, sort of uh, leaps into the, uh, the next uh, 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 thing without uh, them behind me and actually never saying no. Yeah. Because <laughs> I will ask for the impossible. And man, do they get it done. <laughs> So it's just an incredible experience to sort of have of, of, you know, artists, artisans who not only get it, but they're also making an attempt to sort of achieve on the same, they're, they're operating operate with you on the same wavelength. Yeah. So the kind of things that, that I sort of pushed uh, as I was moving into a pace, working with uh, Ruth and Akimi was just, um, you know, like, what if we did this and we just flip over backwards? I didn't know that we were adding anything new to the language of printmaking. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I mean, I just came into sort of um, the kind of questions that I asked when I was a kid about what does it mean to get past the printified service were the very same mm -hmm. questions that I still ask throughout my life. And I think that working with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ruth and Akimi was just like, you know, it was a no-brainer. It's like, uh, you know, you, you're going to ask questions about, uh, you know, this, and they apply you know, all that's necessary to sort of, to allow you to arrive at that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, what started as a, was, uh, this collaboration uh, that was supposed to be a few weeks, we've been doing now for, has mm -hmm. it, is it eight years yet? Five years? <laughs> Six years? Yes, so, and we keep, I, I just, I, the guess that never left. So it's like, <laughs> so it, 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 it's, it's been interesting. And, uh, and I noticed also the way we work, uh, has it's it's like there there's a kind of communication, uh, shorthand communication mm -hmm. that happens yeah. with uh with uh, people that you have synergy with, and like uh so I know they get it and then at the same time I go in and then they beat me up and then I beat them up, and it's like you know, <laughs> and the end result is they introduce always to some new possibilities. Yeah. This is amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. Thanks guys. <laughs> Do you, do you find that that kind of collaborative shorthand mm. in mm. some way then comes back with you to whatever the, the next studio is? Of course, because yeah. what I'm doing in China is what I was doing with them. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that it would have been as smooth enough because, believe me, like the watching porcelain smash is not fun. Oh, I think It's like you're creating like something like, oh, it's just like delicate and it's like big and then it's like, wait a minute, it's like. You know, it's never going to make the trip home, or it's like it's smashing right before your eyes. And it's like, wow, it's like, and I go back to, I say, wow, I say, well, what, 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 how we resolve this? <laughs> we're, at, we're at Page Prince. How we resolve this situation? And then you work your way through it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, so now I'm going on my second year in China, mm -hmm. and like uh, the kind of things or, or questions that are being answered are, uh, are, are deep ones, yes, because it's not, in the end, honestly, it's never really about that so much. Mm -hmm. It's about actually the journey. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that as you're sort of pushing through life, and this is a life philosophy, this is not an art philosophy, this is a life philosophy. Mm -hmm. So as you move through this, uh, you're, you should be in some way open to the suggestion of, of possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you become better as a, as a, as a, uh, uh, as a living being that way uh, by allowing uh, this information uh, uh, Without borders, without borders, because I'm creating, I'm this, this, uh, pr this antenna, you know, uh, creating, I mean, I'm not thinking about making prints. That's how we were able to achieve what we achieved because it was not so much about obeying the laws of printmaking. Right. It was like, okay, you're going in and, uh, and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not a sculptor, I'm not a painter, I'm not a, you know, I'm none of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, like uh, 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 we're gonna allow life to sort of like take hold. And uh, from what I understand, like uh, Ruth is telling me that she goes to these, uh, I guess, seminars or something or other, and you get a bunch of uh, uh, print geeks. <laughs> Yes, yes. I think I'm like, what the hell? It's like, uh, I, I love to be in and on that. It's like <laughs> Comic Con of, uh, of uh, totally. <laughs> print geeks, you know? <laughs> and, they, and they like to talk about techniques. Right. And I said, boy, I, said, I guess we did so. We added something to the uh, language of printmaking. I said, I didn't know we were doing that. But the way to do that, I believe, is to um, not go in as one as an artist and technician, artist who is, that my discipline is, as a, as a, I'm a sculptor, I'm a painter, mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, no, you go in and you allow life to take hold. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in, in that way, it's like your borders dissolve. Yeah. You know, so had hmm. you had experience at all with printmaking, like as an undergrad at Cooper Union? No, no. Zero. So you didn't mm. necessarily already have. A yeah, but it's all the creating, though. It's all yeah. creating, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, it, it, for I know that these things are walking around out there. Uh, they it would seem like even the things that I'd done with Crown Point thereafter. Uh, I keep hearing about them, and it's like they're out these kids growing out there doing things. Right. And you're not necessarily a part of uh, the, the, you know, that part of the journey with them. But they're out there speaking to, to people. And it's like, and they come back to you and they tell you things, you know, that you couldn't have known when you were creating them. Because the, a lot of times the pressure of, of birthing something mm -hmm. uh, is, is a, you know, it's just exactly that. It's just the pressure of it. It's yeah. like, wow, I'm just oh, I'm sad that's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're out there. And now they're out there. But man, do we kick it. We kick ass in yeah. the studio. <laughs> it's, it's clear mm. um, that you do. Here's another one from that same session. But one of the things that really struck me um, when I was looking at them is this idea. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of uh, our air guard idea, but the idea of a body of work and this idea that what comes out from a session, mm. you see certain, um, certain connections between the things. And I wondered mm. if that in some way is a result of your your habit of liking to work on many, multiple things mm -hmm. at once. Absolutely. So like as, I mean, that that's yeah. another thing is of course, um, the print studio generally has a different sense of time. Like chronology is slightly different there because mm. often in a collaboration there's a certain kind of waiting that needs to take mm. place, whether it's waiting for the acid to work or waiting for your collaborators to kind of like get to where you are, mm. like to meet you. And I was curious about that because mm -hmm. I think you're someone for whom time, like you manage to make time really work for you. You like always are moving. And I wondered about well, that. I, I, honestly, it did. And it's definitely initially always seemed like 24 seven and based on uh, my assistants in the studio in Cypress Hills, they would say that I was, I looked like I was going to work. Uh -huh. I had a job. So it was like, I was coming, <laughs> I go and then they would send me out. Oh, you know, we need this. And then the next day they would have it. You know, so it was like, okay, is that correct? Yeah, it was like, okay, we need a plate for this. So this, so like, okay, and it's like, um, I right away go back, and, and believe me, if this, if they were open, I would have been back there like in a two in about an hour, because <laughs> I would go right back to work on yeah. it and come back, and, it, and it's like uh, we would attack the situation. Yeah. So they were working on something, I would be working on something. Mm -hmm. So it was all, it's, it's been pretty much that, and now it's, it's like the shorthand of that is that we know the we built a kind of a language that's still expanding, but, but, but uh, as, as we're moving into the new uh, situation, uh, uh, we're, we're borrowing still from what we've learned. We haven't thrown that out. I have a tendency to sort of touch things and then move on to the next thing, mm -hmm. but they actually don't allow me to do that so much. <laughs> they, they, you know, we still have to sort of slow me down just enough so that we can still borrow from 
all the uh, things that we've achieved in the past. So uh, 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 we, we take them and we twist them and we, uh, we choke them and we, 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 we make them do new things. Uh, but already I can see that we're transitioning into something else. I have no idea what that something else is. But I think that when we come together as a triangle, then I think that then it, it, it reveal itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your palette comes so much to me anyway from nature. Mm. And to see that beautiful kind of celestial blue, sky blue in that first. Mm. Uh, well, you won't be seeing any more silver. No more, no more silver? Why? It like stains someone's hands forever. <laughs> It's bad to breathe in. I, what? They, 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 I tell you, it, 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 it's the first time I ever say, I heard, heard it from them like, oh, that's silver. <laughs> it just gets on everything. Oh. And that okay. means everyone else's work. So right. it's like, okay. It, it, so a I, silver I, I, season. I, I, yes, 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 yes. So it, 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 just, it just, so I said, okay, we're, we're going to take it easy on yeah. the silver. That was a nice, it was nice. Was that? <laughs> so if anyone owns silver, you know, hold it's on special. to it. special. Yes. That's right. <laughs> the time has come. Was that a pigment? Like a powdered pigment? Yeah, so mm. it gets... Oh yeah, it's everywhere. 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 Yeah, okay. Mm. But um, <laughs> I mean, there must be there must be some joy in finding things that you don't necessarily work mm. with at your studio that someone else is working with that you're mm. like, oh, I want to play with that. I want. I would. Love, you know, it's funny because what they've been telling me is that other artists have been coming and borrowing. So it's like, okay, they don't say. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, it's like I, I I would love for that to be working in the opposite direction. Where I can come in and say, mm -hmm. like, okay, let's let's borrow that from what that person was doing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's take that. Mm -hmm. But it's been happening, you know. Yeah. So I think that, like, uh, yeah, so it's... Um, well, I yeah. think technically you're just mm. pushing probably in so many ways that uh, not everyone is keeping up. Uh, I thought we'd go for a minute to the work that you started making with Crown Point because they are... Um, quite different from from what you've been doing with Pace. And mm -hmm. I was just thinking about what you were saying a little bit earlier about how in the studio, something could kind of get cannibalized from one mm. thing and be, get moved into a different thing, that there is a certain mm. modularity. Yep. And I thought about that with these, mm. because these are multiple plates. Mm -hmm. And I did and you have etchings, that? They're etchings, the yeah. I mean, so, so already you're, you're starting from the point of, uh, you, know, you know, they they have a way of working over there. Uh, I had to beat them into shape, meaning like I had already been introduced to a system and how to sort of get it done. Right. So you go into another studio and they're going to be strange and I'm like, oh, it's, uh, it's just etching and like there are certain things that we do and I said, get out of the way. <laughs> and Give so me it, my egg whites. I, no, 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 no. You, you, you have to do that because, it, you know, art has, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's a force. It's a force, right? So it, it, it will dictate what is, it has to happen. That means that you have to be a vehicle at that time. So as the artist, it's like, if someone gets in your way, you gotta get them out of your way. And it, it, it's, it's just the way it is. So, so if they're asking you to come in to do something or whatever, you do it politely. I don't beat people up, but it's like, you better get out of the way. Right. Because, you know, <laughs> you know, art is happening, baby. So it's like, uh, so, <laughs> so it's, a, it's absolutely vital, vital, vital that you take whatever they have to offer you, their facilities or whatever. I mm -hmm. mean, with like with Pace Prince, it's been like Ruth and Akimi. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you know, they are treasures and it's like, you know, when you make that connection, it's like you're introduced to something else, then you know what's important here. So what I did with Crown Point was pretty much just like push them out of the way and say like, like, okay, you know, let's just get it done now. Yeah. You know? And we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And, but in the end, but you have to teach them to sort of like to move, you know, in a way that actually will introduce the absolute highest realization of, of what you're after. And, and it's not like I know. I don't, I'm not saying I go in there knowing. Mm -hmm. I don't, because I know anything about etching. It's yeah. much, much as I knew about like uh, working with um, a, a, a paper and printing and all that. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, just, but you put me in a, in a situation, it's like then you know what you have to do. Yeah. Get out the way. <laughs> Get out uh, the way. Yeah, yeah. This one I think is just like completely amazing. That's ridiculous. I mean, you look at this like what you know. Yes. I, I couldn't have thought what? about that in a million years. You know, yeah. I mean, that that the way that actually it's it's two dimensional, but it's actually three dimensional. It is. And how we achieve that is like all the technicians. But I'm telling you, it was just a matter of like you know, and it's like uh, applying yourself. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden these amazing. things started happening. But you, know? you were using this kind of modular idea in a way, mm -hmm. or you had different plates that you were then combining as mm -hmm. they kind of were From what coming. I can recall, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing. Um, all right, I know that some of our colleagues here 
are going to be due upstairs in just about 10 minutes. Um, I wanted to, to close with this image, which is this upstairs. So if you haven't seen it in person, please stop by uh, Pace Prints upstairs, and you can have a look at it there. But I did want to make sure that we open the floor to questions before people have to run. I know we have a lot of um, friends and family in the room. Um, I don't know if, if anyone wants to refute anything that's been said <laughs> so far today, rebut, uh, <laughs> provide a counterpoint. Um, oh, yeah, I might have shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see sorry, what's waiting for you the next time you walk through there. <laughs> um, but yeah, any, any questions, any yeah. questions mm. from our intrepid group this morning? Uh, Hi, mm -hmm. Kathleen. Well, um, uh, because of the kind of colors and things that I was experimenting with at, at Pace, uh, prints, it was like, um, you know, glazing seemed just the next, you know, phase of that. And of course, the huge library of colors and glazes in, uh, in China. And I just like spent like uh, some months just archiving just the, the, the variations, the colors, everything that I could possibly use so that I, when I made my attack or started creating, I would know what my palette was. And just like I said, China's just like, I mean, we're one of the cradles of civilization. So the potential uh, possibilities of what can happen there are just endless. So I just wanted to make sure that I was well armed. So uh, in going through all the, you know, their, their, uh, their, their shops to sort of uh, to know what was possible, what it meant to sort of like uh, work with uh, low level uh, kilns to, you know, like uh, the intense ones and, and, and they actually they have kilns 20 feet tall. So you can only imagine that you, the possibilities are endless in terms of what you can create on, in terms of scale. So uh, uh, it, it's just a whole new world. And I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get it done. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, do you take time to look at art of the past? You know, like, like Frick and Morgan. And second question: What do you collect? You know, the Frick and the Morgan. They, those are magnificent museums. I hate to say I haven't been here since uh, the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> they are, and I do recall the things that I've learned. You know, I just, the, the biggest headache because I didn't know how to go through museums. I would go and I would look at everything, and uh, and come out of there with a huge headache. But I think that that in the end, uh, uh, I I'm aware, and I know that I've collected so much information, uh, and there's new things out there. I mean, you go to the fairs, for instance. The fact that these fairs have opened up the the international, uh, 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 international group of artists, I, I, I think this is magnificent. I, though it seems like a meat market at times, I think they're actually absolutely vital that we are continue, continue to sort of be introduced to uh, world art. Um, um, all these things are about us, about our journey on this planet. So I think that like, as I move through uh, uh, the fairs and through museums, is, uh, uh, I, I know that this is, is, the information is not just going in through my eyes, it's going through my pores. So, and then it's going to come out, you know, you're going to, you know, translate it, you know, uh, so that it's uh, legible, uh, uh, you know, and it's just, uh, uh, all this is important. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, who do I look at? Is that what was one of the questions, who I look at? What do I collect? Uh, you know, uh, I can't collect my work because I can't afford it, but uh, <laughs> what I do, <laughs> I do, I do uh, collect, you know, or trade, trade. That's most our smart artists, they trade. Yes. <laughs> so the idea of uh, actually buying, I have done that with uh, uh, artists, artists uh, who, you know, friends who are trying to get out there. Uh, uh, and I think it's important to support. So I think that uh, a lot of times I'm doing it because I love the work, but at the same time, you have to make sure that you uh, um, continue to touch these folks and let them know that they're not on this journey alone. So, uh, um, so, so it, it, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, it, collection's getting bigger. <laughs> yes, hi. Um, so I am married to a scientist, and mm -hmm. I'm sort of struck by the, the intensity of your work and your drive with your work, similar to his. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sort of curious, do you have outside interests? Do you do anything to relax? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, the, I mean, the alchemy of what, what we do as artists, I can, I can tell you honestly, is, you know, we have to sort of take in information. I've worked with, like, uh, had collaboration with, like, Merce Cunningham, 
Uh, uh, right now, I'm getting ready to work with Alvin Ailey, and uh, and I have a huge collection of films. I follow uh, 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 filmmakers of, I mean, Terrence Malick to uh, Stanley Kubrick. I mean, like, uh, I mean, you name it. I mean, there's a lot of the indie directors. I, I because they're on, on the edge. And I like, in order to see or keep yourself sharp, you need to sort of know what's happening creatively. It seems like film is actually uh, the most, uh, or the biggest punch in the face that you can achieve, uh, we can achieve collectively. You know, art, the, the art, kind of art that we deal with is sometimes perceived as elitist and it's sort of, you know, like, okay, in order to sort of make that leap, you need to sort of like be in this group. But film, on the other hand, is one that you can transition to Everyone can transition to almost immediately, and the uh, 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 I, I mean I, I I just love like I have have them on all the time in the studio. There's like three televisions going, so like uh, and I sort of like you know uh, mostly always on Turner Classics or on you know like uh, all the uh, films that I own. It's like you know there something is playing, but it, you know uh, uh, but that energy uh, I know that like looking at a sort of John Ford landscape, I know that my uh, works you know, will mimic at times a lot of those compositions. So the uh, influences uh, from film, I think, are probably the strongest. And music also, if we look at the uh, piece that was at the De Young, I mean, you can see the musical notations that are from certain uh, uh, either classical or jazz sort of, uh, uh, of, 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 of readings, you know? So, um, you know, I think any artist can sort of hit tones, you know, like uh, uh, if he's sort of like in tune with, you know, like a, a music, you can do that. And the alchemy of what I do definitely is like, it's, it's science, you know, so, so all these things are, are, are important. And I, I, do, I do get try to get out. <laughs> Leo, is it important to you for the films to see them in the theater, or do you prefer to bring them into the both, studio? Both. Okay. Because I think you should have, you should support, <laughs> you know, a cinema outside, you, so you should put money down. And then I also buy a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that, like, a, 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 you know, a, as far as, like, what you're taking in visually is, like I said, is one thing. But it's really the emotional core is what I'm looking for. So uh, the impact of that, I know the weight of a lot of things that I've seen, the emotional weight and the psychological weight has a lot to do with all these things that I've touched and seen. And, like, uh, uh, you know, it it's, it's can go on endlessly, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lighter, happier. That's interesting to say lighter, happier. I, I, though I haven't put up enough color, I don't think there are enough color things out to say, but I can tell you that I've had uh, situations where I've challenged uh, my palette, so to speak. So when I was working with Rust, when people were like, oh, this is what the work is about, and they felt the, you know, like uh, that, that the intensity of that material, I knew that, like before, that I needed to sort of challenge that. So I started just working with white paper. I don't think we had any samples of that up but, uh, here, but we, I did for maybe like four or five years just working with just cast white paper, uh, like a, it's a, a bond paper, like, like a copy paper, and just making things with that. I say, if I did that, what would happen if I took away the things that I was comfortable with, which was rust at the time. And once I, you know, create these works, uh, uh, these uh, cast paper pieces, in the end, the end it was, it was the same. It's like, once you find yourself, that's it. You, it's like, you're, you know, once you find your voice, it's like whatever materials you end up inevitably touching, it's gonna sort of become that thing or that material. And like, uh, uh, or that material become that, that uh, emotion. So, uh, uh, so I couldn't really escape from me by working with just white paper. So working with color, I'm sure, is going to end up in everything being the same in terms of its level of emotional intensity. But when it comes to the, uh, uh, the, the experience, for me to sort of plant myself and say I am now working with this material, it, for me, that part of the journey is the most important thing. The end result is what you guys will end up completing and saying, okay, you're saying it's happier, or you're saying it's like, oh, this is the drag, or it's heavy, you know, but I can't really dictate that. I can only know that I'm a vehicle in this, right? So I need to work with this material at this time, yeah. I know um, our host has made it possible for us to continue this conversation in a uh, 
less stage audience format. So if you're available to join us, please do uh, stay on for the reception. I know some of you have to go to work. Um, but I wanted to thank you all so much for joining us this morning. And of course, the one and only Leonardo. <laughs>